Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. We hope that we are live right now. Steffi, can we check if we are live with our support people? I think not yet. Okay. Let me know. Uh, Georgia is saying not yet. Okay. Let me try from the link as well. Okay. Yeah, now we're yeah. now we're live. Okay, sorry uh, for these technical issues, and hello to everyone from every part of the world. Um, the thing is, before starting the webinar itself, I should just mention that the thing is that uh, we're going the other way that we have gone uh, before with organizing the webinars. That's why it's a little bit tricky for us uh, to go through this new. Uh, organization of the webinar but we hope it will work as we want it to so hello once again to everyone who is watching us today uh, we are here to present our webinar on global health in Scopi, uh, which will basically cover three parts but I'll go uh, more into details a little bit later First, I want to introduce to you the people who has been working on this webinar for you. And uh, they are Kanchana Bali, our amazing Scopi Regional Assistant for Asia Pacific. Hi, Kanchana. Hi, everyone. Hi, Tanya. Okay, we also have uh, Steffi, Stefana Chortia, the Scopi Regional Assistant for Europe. Hi, Steffi. Hey, guys. And I'm also here with you, I'm Tanya Zebra, I'm your Scopy Director. So what is our webinar going to be about today? Let's go through the agenda. Basically, it will consi uh, consist of three main parts. First part will be about the whole concept of global health education in IFMSA, and in particular in Scopy. And what do, do we do in Scopy? And uh, what is the new words that you may have heard already, global health theme framework, framework, and why are we working on them? Then uh, we're going to talk about UHC simulation. It's a huge project. Three standing committees have been working on during this term. And then we'll move to the final part about health systems database. It's, uh, I would say, maybe even a bigger project uh, because it's already ongoing for the second term and it will uh, present you an amazing source of information and a lot of data. Um, and we're going to start with the global health theme framework part, uh, which is actually related to 2019-2022. And I'm presenting this part, but however, I need to also give, give credits to our amazing general assistant, Elena Ozzi, uh, who has drafted the whole framework from the beginning until the whole IT gave their input. So uh, what are we going to talk about in the first part? First of all, we'll just remember once again about what is global health and why we address this topic in exchanges. Um, I will watch a video that you may have watched already. Uh, it will just take us two minutes, so don't worry. And then we'll go uh, in deep about discussion of, uh, of global health education overarching concept in IFMSA and what exactly it means and why it is it the part of global priorities and why are we talking about global health education in Scopi in particular. And then we'll go directly to the global health theme work. Uh, so today we want to present to you this framework and then uh, we just want uh, you to also be sure that you will have your time and opportunity to provide input on this um, framework. So it will be sent to the news servers and all the news, so the national uh, exchange officers will be able to provide us with your input within two weeks after we send the email for input. And then it will be officially shared with everyone after the final uh, edition from the Scope International team site. So uh, let's watch the video first in order to remember what global health is and why it's relevant to exchanges. Okay. Let's go. IFMSA believes in a world where medical students and healthcare professionals unite to tackle global health challenges by taking leadership roles in their communities. Since 1951, we provide students with the 
opportunity to get to know different health systems by assisting medical electives abroad. Global health is an area for study, research, and practice that places a priority on improving health and achieving equity for all people worldwide. And this is a priority for our IFMSA exchange program. To achieve this, students going on exchange must have an active role while abroad. Curiosity is necessary and students must gather all information they can regarding their local and their hosting communities. Attend a training session organized by your student organization before your departure and upon arrival if organized. And it is also important to set your own goals and expectations for your exchange as well as meet your home and the supervising doctor to get to know what is expected from you during your exchange. Make sure to always observe and ask when you have questions, especially regarding the local epidemiology that you're placed in. Be kind and understand the intercultural differences you might encounter. Attend your clerkship, fill your evaluation form, and prepare the experience report of your exchange. Reflect on your experience and how you can collaborate locally and worldwide to improve health in your community. Medical students are provided with materials to help them to increase their awareness on global health, such as the Global Health Guidebook, PDT UNESCO, and much more. Will FMSA exchanges make us better healthcare professionals? We believe that the integration of communication, collaboration, professionalism, management, erudition, and advocacy makes a good doctor. To join us in our Scopy and Scory exchanges, because the letter I in illness is isolation, and the crucial letter in wellness are we. Okay, I think we're done with the video. I just need to apologize for the technical delays in case they have happened. We believe that it will be better if you re-watch the webinar in the recording, first of all. And secondly, you're always um, able to watch the same Global Health in Exchanges video in the IFMC uh, Scopy capacity, Scopy Exchanges capacity uh, playlist on YouTube. Uh, we'll add the link to the video in the description after it. Uh, okay, so girls, uh, just checking, can you still hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, good. Thanks a lot. Uh, okay, just to finish the line of the video, I also uh, want to mention that that was the video drafted and created in the year uh, 2017, back then, uh, and uh, the contributors to those video was uh, were uh, people from the IT exchanges team of 1617 um, 17 team. And also a special thank you to Rodrigo Roa and Victor Garcia, uh, who managed to finalize the video and share it with us, and uh, whoever contributed to creation of those, uh, that video. So let's move on then. Uh, now we hope that you understand how exchanges are linked to global health and how global health is linked to exchanges. Now let's go a little bit more into details of the documentation and, um, and why it is so important that we are addressing this topic in IFMC and in Scopy. So uh, as you may all know or maybe have heard or maybe you're hearing about it right now, IFMC has decided that the work of the whole federation should be structured and should be organized and in collaboration between all the acting bodies. That's why um, IFMC started with creating the global uh, external focus areas in uh, back in times. And they were the first, let's say, global priorities that IFMC was establishing just for the external work. However, later it was decided that we need some other guiding, um, guiding paths uh, for the work of the whole federation, not only on external level, but also on the internal level. That's why global priorities were first drafted in 2017. And uh, it is the second term we're working in this format. So in the term 2018-2019, uh, the following topics were, um, were 
chosen as the ones to be the priorities for IFMSA. So you can f see uh, 10 focus areas and also three overarching concept. Every standing committee is responsible for one or more focus areas and maybe some more overarching concepts. Let me just quickly explain the difference between focus areas and overarching concepts. Focus areas are usually um, usually uh, belong to the area of work of one standing committee all only, whereas the overarching concepts are more broader, uh, way broader, and more standing committees are responsible in achieving the uh, goals of the that um, area. So, in particular, what is relevant to Scopi during this term is global health education. So it is a big uh, overarching concept we are taking care of. Um, uh, we also work a little bit on social accountability and universal health coverage. We have worked on this during this term. However, it wasn't um, our responsibility to uh, contribute to FMSA development in this area. However, we tried to implement it in Scopi as much as we could. So, uh, global health education, as I have already mentioned, um, is our concept that we are taking care of and it was also divided into two global um, into two main parts the internal part and the external part so for the internal part is a direct res responsibility of the scopy director and the external part of the lesson officer on medical education uh, here you can see um, the updates that were done about the work on the global health education priority overarching concept by august meeting 2019 uh, but you can always find them on the NML server. And also you can find all those internal goals, actions and indicators in our annual working plan. So I won't go too much into details. Just want to say that we were working uh, on the concept uh, in Scopy a lot this year. Furthermore, I should also mention that in Scopy, we also prioritize this topic a lot. Uh, and there were already periods working on some topics related to global health and uh, in order to prioritize and somehow um, centralize the work in Scopy, um, we have decided to go with some specific topics for a few years. So in 2016 it was uh, it was voted that the priority topic for global health in Scopy should be social determinants of health. So those who are all these goldies remember how we had uh, quite a lot of talks on this uh, topic and we were working on uh, producing some materi materials on that. Not we, uh, not us in particular, I mean not our team, but of course the previous teams. So the previous team on social determinants of health was valid for the time period from 2016 until 2019. And in Mar August meeting 20, 18 in Canada we had the voting on the next topic that Scopy will take care of uh, starting from 2019 until 2022. So back then in Canada it was voted it was voted that the um, priority topic uh, topics will be universal health coverage and health system. Uh, so the topics were voted, but we had some concerns in the international team. How will we ensure the stability of work on the topic uh, during three years? We all know that FMSA is a federation which has a very, very big and quick turnover. So we need to uh, make sure that whatever work was planned in, let's say, 2018, will be still continued in 2021 and the uh, international team will not forget about the importance of this uh, work of that work so that's why uh, with the current international team we have decided that we need to create some document which will guide uh, our team and the future international teams through the work necessary to be done in relation to the newly selected global health theme so, which is, uh, once again, I'm repeating, universal health coverage and health systems. And today is the first day we're going to present to you the first draft that we have uh, prepared with the international team. Um, and uh, it consists of two major parts on the universal health coverage and on health systems. Um, before, we also have a major goal that we want to still uh, maintain and keep until uh, for the whole global health education topic. So, 
uh, without further ado, let me go into details. I just want to remind you that if you're watching us uh, live, you have the possibility to ask us questions directly uh, in the comments uh, on the YouTube channel. Uh, there is an area on your right, if you're watching from laptop, or below you, um, below the screen, I mean, uh, where you can ask us questions, and in the very, very end, we'll uh, dedicate a few minutes to answering your questions, if you have any. Uh, but don't worry, we'll send the documents for input, and we will share all the information that we will uh, perform today during the webinar. So let me jump into the Global Health Theme Framework. I'll go quickly through the goals without any, uh, without specifically stopping on indicators. You can go on your own later. But general concept of the framework, and you may be also asking why we call it framework. I'll go into this later. The general concept is that we have goals and we have indicators, so specific um, so uh, something that we have to specifically achieve by some period, uh, by some day in the future uh, or some month in the future in particular. And yes, uh, we also suppose that uh, it will be a document shared and this document will have two options, the PDF option and the edit editable option. The editable option will be edited by uh, every IT in, by the uh, August meeting of each year. Uh, and they will be able to report on the achievements in the areas mentioned here. So, framework. Why is it framework? Uh, well, literally, just because we ran out of other uh, any other words that can describe the concept of the document. We have strategies, we have databases, we have um, priorities, and a lot more. So we consider that framework can be actually uh, a really good word to uh, express what is the document about and what is the um, um, yeah what is it all about so it should be the frame that will be uh, considered by the future ITs in their work so the goals are the following first of all we want to increase the accessibility of uh, for Scopy members and exchange students to global health resources for which we have already started working on it the educational learning platform the e-learning platform for global health education and the work hopefully will be continued by the next team and maybe in particular by the small working group uh, then goals related to uhc uh, specifically are that Scopia IT plays an active role in global health education, including but not limited to UHC of Scopia members. By this, we also hope that uh, there will be sessions organized during global uh, general assemblies and regional meetings. Also, we want to ensure that animals play an active role in the global health education of their Scopia members on different topics, included but not limited to UHC. So we'll be also checking you and your um, involvement into promoting of this topic and of course we will collect data through a uh, through a new report so be ready to listen to what we'll be telling to you uh, today uh, telling you today and then um, report us whatever you do because we want to share um, uh, your activity as well with the others also to increase awareness uh, of Scopy members about global health and UHC in particular um, so we want to make sure that the members know how SCOPY is related to this topic, how and why should this topic be addressed in the professional exchanges program. And for this, we hope to organize social media campaigns. Um, and we have a number, well, we, we have established that at least one campaign should be organized during every term. Also, we want to make sure uh, to make UHC available, so UHC topic available as an e-learning uh, at an e-learning platform. Sorry for the typo. In order to be ac as accessible for more Scopy members and exchange students, so you remember we mentioned about e-learning platform in the beginning, and here we want to emphasize that this topic should be there by September 2021. Um, also, we need to ensure the increase of number of public health exchanges. You know that public health exchanges is a, is a joint project organized by uh, NMOs with the help of SCOPY and SCOF. And we hope that we will see an increase by at least 10% and 15% correspondingly in the future with each year. Uh, also, we want to increase sorry, uh, Scopy collaboration with different stakeholders working in the area of being able to provide support on global health topics. For example, you may have heard that we're working with, uh, we're trying to get an endorsement from an organization called CUGH, Consortium of Universities on Global Health. 
Also, our major goal was to um, get in touch with WHO and to ensure their support in um, developing of our programs. So we came uh, to a general conclusion together with LWHO that it may be even more relevant if national uh, NMOs contact their WHO officers directly. Uh, so, um, of course, the teams and maybe future EDAs will be supporting the um, animals in the work in this direction as well. Um, also, we hope to have more externals on uh, during our international meetings to uh, talk about global health and educate our participants. Next goal to ensure the implementation of the standardized UHC simulation by the NMOs in collaboration with other standing committees as well. So is, uh, as I've mentioned in the beginning, oh, we have drafted the UHC simulation and it was a big small working group uh, with representatives of three standing committees, Colby, Scoff and Scorp. And Kanchana will talk more about it, of course. And then the next block is about health systems. Uh, the health system database, as it looks like right now, will be presented by Steffi later. However, by the end of the 2020, we hope that the whole health system of um, uh, the, the whole health system database will be finalized in collaboration with other standing committees. Uh, well, uh, also we make uh, we want to make the health system database easily accessible for exchange students and exchange officers alike. So we want to locate those data uh, in the Scopy Scory Explorer pages of uh, exchanges database, um, and also um, we uh, hope to organize at least one uh, at least one session at at least one GA and two regional meetings. Uh, on health systems um, topic and uh, yeah we hope that you will also help us to promote the database uh, sharing the materials during the GAs uh, your NGAs uh, including this into the PDTs for your exchange students UATs as well and um, also we want to add this collaboration between three standing committees SCOPI, SCOF and SCORP as Sanya has mentioned earlier so I will go into the details of it. Next slide, please. Okay, so this is the title, Universal Health Coverage. What is universal health coverage? All people, communities, can use the promotive, preventive, curative, and rehabilitative and palliative health services they need of sufficient quality to be effective while also ensuring that the use of these services does not expose uh, does not expose the user to financial hardship. What universal health coverage, this is the definition. What it actually is trying to say is that every single person, no matter where they live, universally or globally, get access to health healthcare services without having to worry about the money that they're going to spend or how much financial burden they would have to take. So that is universal health coverage. Next slide, please. Now, universal health coverage simulation. Universal health coverage simulation in definitions is an interactive game that is aimed to, to explain the different components of universal health coverage to participants through real life situations on a daily basis by the population. For a person who is living in a certain place, we may, we may be completely unaware of something else that is happening somewhere else. So this simulation is a game that is meant to provide that experience to the participants who, are, who would otherwise be unable to feel the same in the place that they're living in. Next slide, please. Why? Now, Tanya has talked about universal health coverage. I am talking about universal health coverage simulation. Why is it so important? Why are we mentioning it? There are two reasons. First is to explain what a health system is and give participants an idea about different models of healthcare systems. Health systems will be dealt with in more detail by Steffi later on, but universal health coverage is just another mechanism. Universal health coverage simulation is another mechanism in which we can explain and put across to participants what the different forms of health systems can be like in different places. And secondly, it is also important to introduce and explain the concept of universal health coverage to the participants, and then tell them how that can be achieved through a health system. 
first we talk about the health system and then we talk about how that health system helps in achieving universal health coverage. Next. In short, the simulation gives an opportunity to the participants to put yourself in somebody else's shoes because we are living in some other part of the world. As observers, we may not always understand somebody else's mind. So we're giving this opportunity for participants to experience firsthand what it would be like if a certain health system existed in their country or a certain kind of a, a health system environment did not exist in their country. Next. So the simulation occurs in four phases. The first phase is the introduction to the simulation. The second would be home. Third would be the universal health coverage bill. And fourth would be repeat. All of these are the different phases that I will now be going into details. Next. The simulation will consist of two rounds. It is generally either a two or a three hour program or two and a half hour program, which will be considered in two rounds. One, first half would be before the U universal health coverage bill is passed. And the second half would be after the universal health uh, coverage bill is passed and why it is done in this way is because it gives the participants an opportunity to outweigh the benefits and the disadvantages of each of the situations that they're in. Next. Let me give you all an example to explain how the game works. So you have a number of participants. The facilitators first introduce them to the game. So we welcome the participants to a certain country X. Then the participants are asked to go to home and receive their roles and the specific action cards. After they receive that, they go to different settings. Now, how is this going to work? What is home? What introduction are we talking about? I'm gonna talk about it more. Next, please. Firstly, you tell the participants that we would like to welcome you all to the Universal Health Coverage Simulation game. And then you ask them to go to their respective home. Generally, for, the, uh, for structuring this game, we have kept four stations as home. Home is the starting point of this game. This is the place where they're going to take, in inverted commas, major life and health decisions. And they also get their action cards from home. Next slide. So. They start here. What does it mean that they start here? They're gonna get roles first. So this is just an example of a role. For example, you're a participant and you get one of the roles, which means that you're a married, educated, immigrant couple. You just arrived in the country and have no job. You have some savings to last you only two months. Your mental health state is low and you are exhausted. You are irregular immigrants. So this is just one of the many roles that the participants will be getting. They can either be married, unmarried, uneducated, educated. So roles, each role that you give to the participants should have certain detail. Next, please. So what is included in each role? Each role can have up to six participants, which will act as one unit, or what we call in normal terms as a family. So each participant who have not met earlier will get certain roles and will come together as one family. And in each role, we write a short description of the role, which includes employment, savings, education, and living conditions, just to give the partic participants a little bit of detail and a little bit of feel of what they, what they are or their identity. Next. Then once the participant knows their role, then you give them an action card. Remember, they receive the, they receive the action card at home. Action card can be something like this. So you get involved in a car accident and get several fractures and you have abdominal pain. Now, this is just one example of the action card. Next slide, please. Action cards can be of all different sorts. So there can be action cards that say that will benefit you, like the first one in the picture here, some will benefit you. Some will screw others over, like the one we just mentioned, where you get into an accident and you get fractured. And some can be totally random, such as shopping or yay cookies, like the ones written in the action card in the picture. So next, please. Now, 
you got involved in a car accident and got several fractures and you have abdominal pain so where do you go now this is where the game actually begins because once you receive an action card you need to do something about it right it's action so then you need to go to different settings with that uh, that corresponds to your action card so for example here you're involved in a car accident so where you where are you going to go next next slide please you're going to go into one of the many places that you can see in this picture this picture is a busy picture there's a lot going on here so let me let me break it down for you in the previous action card it has been said that you have you've had an accident so technically the first place you would go to would be the hospital or the emergency room as you can see in the picture here now there's some other places also like the bank the pharmacy the insurance company the job office grocery store and immigrant's office if you remember if you remember early on i told you as a part of your identity that you were an immigrant so for an immigrant who doesn't know how the health system works in this country you don't know how to um you have no savings it would be technical that you go to the er and then go to the immigrant's office or vice versa depending on you depending on your condition secondly to go to the hospital and to actually pay your bills you will need some money where do you get money you get money in the bank so you can go to the bank and then you can collect your money that is if you have savings or you can get an insurance before you go to the hospital so that the insurance covers your hospital bill so for that you can go to the insurance company so this is the mechanism how the game would work you see you get one action card the immediate reaction to that action would be going to the hospital because you got into an accident but along with that would come the hospital bills the expenses of the medicines and you may not always have the necessary savings or the necessary money to actually buy all of those things that you need so for that we have different places different settings so now i'll tell you if you are in a country or in a country where the uhc bill has not been passed what would your condition be like we just want to give the participants an idea okay maybe they go to the pharmacy and there is there's no there's no medicine they don't have enough stock of medicine and they cannot buy it that would be the first scenario or they go to the grocery store and they only get unhealthy food that does not help them in their health in any way or they go to the bank and they have no savings you see they don't have anything they have no means to actually get a job okay they may have a job they may have the means to get a job so for that they go to the job office as you see in the bottom of the picture they, it says job office but if there are a lot of people who are unemployed and there are a lot of people who want the job then there's very less chances that you actually get a job to earn enough money for you to pay the bills of the hospital that you would have to go to now next slide please if we see the faces we have now come to the point where we're done with introduction we're done with home we've come to the point where the country passes the uhc simulation bill uhc sorry uhc bill not simulation bill the universal health coverage bill so what happens next now we repeat why do we repeat because we want to show to the participants how it would be different if they were supposed to go through the same things in a place where uhc coverage universal health coverage was there how would their life be different back to the previous slide please okay now we're in a country or in the country where the universal health coverage bill has been passed what now now maybe the government pays your bills for example pays your hospital bills or you have a good government um Uh, coverage and the government says that irrespective of your financial condition you're being t- treated for whatever condition you have how would things change things would change drastically if you get the same access that you did earlier now you would go to the hospital you wouldn't have to worry about your bills everything would go smoothly the government would ensure that the, that you get the medicines and the medicines are in stock and you get them for a price that you can pay even if you cannot pay the price then the government would have some measures or the health system would be such that there are some measures in which you can pay the bills later now as you can see in a situation like this which is very ideal a person would not have to suffer because they cannot have access to healthcare system or healthcare services even if they do have access to them they 
could not afford it. A, such a situation would not arise. So here is the difference between one and place where the universal health coverage has not been and the same country or the same place where it has been passed. So the whole idea of the simulation is to let the participants feel firsthand and to let the participants know how it would be different being into different healthcare systems, even if it is in the same country and what difference one universal health coverage bill can do. Next. Next. Okay, so the role of the facilitator. Now we're assuming that you are going to organize this universal health coverage simulation in your NMO or in uh, your global health activity. What would be your role? As you can see, that's Raven there doing expressions with her face. So that would exactly be your role. You would have to enact the roles according to the setting and the time. For example, if you're a person who's in the uh, job office, for example, in a country or in the situation where the universal health coverage bill has not been passed, you would perhaps be very stern and very reluctant in giving the job to the to the participant because you need to show to them that life is difficult for people where they where universal health coverage has not been passed and it's such a burden for them when they do not have money to even actually get a job so that they can afford the health care services so that would be your expression and maybe that would be how you uh, present to them and let them know that the conditions are not ideal whereas if you're in the setting a few minutes later where universal health coverage has been passed, you make, you enact yourself to make the participant feel like they're welcome, that they wouldn't have to worry about the money. Even though they get a little bit less, they would still have some money to begin with, or they're supported by the government, or uh, they even if they do not have enough money, it would not prevent them from accessing the health. Next. Okay. So now the debrief. debrief. So each round, that is, we have two rounds, as I mentioned earlier, each round would last 30 to 45 minutes. And in the beginning, it is very important that we introduce the game and we just let them know what we're going to be doing. In the end, we need to explain the concept and the theory of it, because we want the participants not just to have fun during the game and not just to enjoy the simulation, but we need to provoke some thought into them why we're doing the simulation, the goal, ultimate goal is not just having a good um, simulation process, having a good game that the participants enjoy, but it is to put across a message that there are actually people who are surviving in conditions where universal health coverage is not there. In those scenarios, the haves can do whatever they want. They can pay for their bills, but the have not do not have that access, do not have that opportunity. So it is very important to explain the concept to them and also, we asked the participants to share their experiences because they were the ones who went through the game. We as facilitators and as organizers, we just put, across, so put them across a certain situations. But if there is someone who has not, has not seen that kind of a healthcare system, then that would be a different, entirely different experience for them altogether. So, the, so asking the participants to share the experience is one of the most important parts of debrief in the universal health coverage simulation. Next. Now, evaluation. Now, we've done this game. We know why we're doing it. We want the participants to learn something out of it. But how are we going to actually um, know whether they are learning something out of it or not. For this, we need two things. We need the pretest and the post test. So the pretest is a test that the participants take before they are a part of the simulation game. And the post test is one which they take afterwards. Now we need to make sure that we have enough theory and enough conceptual uh, matter during the debrief and during the introduction so that the participants know where it's coming from. They have this scientific um, definitions and framework uh, and the scientific concepts that they need is with them. And also, we also let them acquire new knowledge and information from the simulation and let them know and let ourselves know what they've learned from the simulation game itself. Next slide, please. Now, assuming that you're going to be a part of the organizing team, if you want to organize it in your animal, what you need to do. 
you need to get things organized. Make sure you have at least 10, better around 20 facilitators. Now, this also depends on the number of participants. Yeah. Do want the settings similar or the same as the ones I mentioned earlier, you would need at least 20 people because facilitating is a very tedious job, guys, and you need to have enough skilled manpower and ready just in case something does not work out. And one to two people should be main facilitators. So they should be people who know the core, the concept, and the whole who are well equipped with the uh, formation of the game and how everything is going to work. Third would be the materials. The rules and the action points need to be pre printed because they're basically cards that you hand out to participants because they may not always remember what their rules are. So the materials need to be printed. You need to have at least one online and one face-to-face -face training of facilitators because it can get chaotic because there are a lot of number of people, different settings. Everybody needs to know what their job is and everybody needs to know what they're supposed to do. So you need to have at least two trainings and at least one timekeeper to see if everything is going according to time and also two to three observers who can make sure that the participants, each time they um, they seem lost, they are facilitated well and they are uh, shaped to their respective settings or wherever they need to be. Next slide, please. Okay, now these are success stories. So um, I want to mention at this point in time that the small working group for the UHC simulation began in December. And the first phase uh, included actually doing the pilot phase in the March meeting 2019 in Slovenia, which was conducted successfully. And after that, we had the second phase in which we all of everybody was working for the manual on UHC simulation. And uh, also the second project, like the second time we did the simulation in an IFMSA General Assembly. And it was also conducted successfully in August meeting 2019 in Taiwan. And also the Universal Health Coverage uh, Simulation Manual for Medical Students uh, was presented as an article in AME 2019. And uh, resources that most animals can use in, if they want to organize a, a simulation in their animal and a point of information here is for the upcoming term that is 2019 2020 if you would like to organize a universal health coverage simulation in your animal then please sure uh, please make sure that you contact uh, either uh, uh, any one of the three standing committees scopy scope or scorp and just let the directors know that you're organizing such a thing because that would help in impact assessment and that would help to you know actually see whether and evaluate whether or not um, what, how it went like and what the impact was and what difference it made to your participants. So uh, next slide, please. So I would like to conduct my part of this webinar by saying that if you need more information uh, about the universal health coverage simulation, then please make sure you refer to the manual. It is in the new folder. Uh, under trainings for exchange students. That's what the manual looks like. And you can also scan the QR code, which will take you directly to the PDF file that the manual, uh, PDF file of the manual. And also at this point, I would like to mention that if there's any doubts, please make sure that you contact the school PIT or the SCOF or the SCORP uh, responsible people from the small working group if you want to organize one in your animal. And if you want more details on action cards, roles, settings, they're all in the manual. Please feel free to refer to them. And I hope you have um, a great time organizing such an exciting event. And I would like to thank you all uh, for listening to me. Now I would like to hand over to uh, Steffi so that she can continue with the health system da uh, database. Thank you very much. Uh, just a second, if you allow me, I want to, at this point, I just want to also thank uh, Scorp and Scorp. Well, first of all, Captain Teach, uh, the Scorp director, whose idea it was originally to uh, work on this universal health coverage simulation. And um, the uh, EDL, the SCORP director, and also Omnia 
uh, Maha and Kanchana, who were the main responsible one from standing committees uh, to work on this small working group and on this whole project. Thanks a lot, without you, it wouldn't be possible. And also the whole small working group who worked on specific details and you were the biggest support in this project. Thanks a lot. I just wanted to come back to this slide as well, uh, mentioning that during the presentation of Amy, uh, where we were presenting the whole concept of simulation, we were approached by some people and some oh, professors from universities from all around the world got interested also in our simulation. So hopefully it will not only stay in IFMSA, but move uh, across the world in different um, formats of education. That's it. And thanks, Kanchana, a lot for your presentation. And Steffi. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Steffi, here you go. Thank you. Okay, so now we're continuing with the last part of the webinar, and that's the Health System Database. Uh, it's a project that I've been working on uh, since um, two years now, so I hope that you'll enjoy the presentation. The agenda of the, uh, my part, uh, you can go to the next slide, please, will be going briefly to a theoretical part, so first definition of health systems, uh, talking briefly about the four models of the health systems, what fa factors are uh, affecting the health system performance, and then I will tell you more about how we design the country profiles, how to use the database, and what's next. Okay, so first, well, uh, what is a health system? Um, I guess uh, it is a challenging definition to put since it's not just something about one individual or one institution itself, but it's rather a composition of more. Next slide, please. Um, so as you can see, Health systems are composed of people, of organizations and other institutions, everyone wanting to produce actions whose primary intention is to promote, to restore and to maintain health. So as you can see there in the image, there are more um, factors uh, that take part in a health system. So are, there, there are the human resources, the medicine and technology, the governance of the health system, information shared through it, the financing, the service delivery, and all of them, of course, with having the people in the center, our patients, and conducted by people. Next slide, please. Okay, so if we go to the four models of health system, so these are uh, four main models that are, um, that are described in the literature and that you can maybe identify in your own health systems of your own country. So, I will briefly go through uh, explaining them to you and you can make it like an exercise to think which, um, which one is visible or is applied in your country. And I also want to mention that uh, many countries have a mix of these models, so it's not necessarily 100% applicable in, um, in the countries. So the first one is the beverage model. The, the beverage model is, uh, was created by um, British um, he, he was called William Be uh, Beveridge, of course, and he was the one who created the National Health Service in the UK in 1948. So his idea was to promote a high quality medical care rather than to seek profits. So how did he do it? Well, it, it's similar to how public libraries and police forces are financed by the government, where health care is controlled to citizen tax money. So citizens of countries um, who take and who utilize this healthcare plan do not directly pay for their medical or other health related bills on the spot, but they rather pay taxes. And the goal of this plan is to provide quality healthcare regardless of people's ability to pay for their care. So this is beverage model. Then in the Bismarck model, it is an insurance system and it is financed jointly by employers and employees through payroll taxes, which are called sickness funds. So these taxes are directly deducted from paychecks. For example, the United States has adopted a form of Bismarck model on healthcare, and most Americans who are employed but are not yet uh, eligible for Medicare, their insurance program, they receive health insurance coverage from their employers as a benefit of employment. However, this approach is not as advanced as the German version because employers uh, limit the list of health insurance insurers that, pro, uh, that uh, employees can use. Unlike the United States, where employers 
provide a narrow selection of health insurance employees can choose from, the German employees have the option of choosing more than 200 types of sickness funds to pay into. So the Bismarck models basically, um, you are required to have a job and the, um, the employer is paying taxes for you to get these private um, insurances that are called sickness funds. Then what about the national health insurance model? This is something that combines elements from both beverage and be smart models. It, what happens is that it uses private sector providers, but the payment comes from a government run insurance program that all citizens fund through a premium or a tax. So again, the, the citizens pay a tax and the government runs the insurance program, but it uses uh, private um, hospitals. These universal insurance programs tend to be less expensive and have lower administrative costs than American style um, insurance plans. So it's a bit more cheap of a health system, this model. Last but not least, it is the out-pocket uh, model. The out-of-pocket payment model, I guess you know about it. If not, you'll hear it now. So this is a model that is the most disorganized, I can say. Uh, among the, 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 the last uh, models that I presented. And this one is, cannot ensure that every citizen have access to healthcare. Why? Because it means that the patient, when they have a problem, they need to pay on the spot for every service that they get. That's the disadvantage of this, of this model. And unfortunately, that's what happens in many, many countries around the world. Um, Out-of-pocket payments are uh, something that do, do not ensure universal health coverage and should be lowered to the minimum, if possible, because we want the well-being of our patients. And uh, as Kanchana was mentioning before, to protect the patient, the patients from financial hardship. Now going next, if I talk now about um, what makes a good health system, so not only what is the health system composed of, well, a good health system needs to deliver quality services to all people, needs robust financing mechanism, so it needs money to function, of course. It needs well-trained and adequately paid workforce, reliable information to base decision-making, and well-maintained facilities and logistics. This may seem easy um, and, let's say, logical, but unfortunately, it is not... Um, it is not accomplished in all countries. If we go forward, uh, we could see uh, five control knobs, um, so-called control knobs, that are actually factors that can indicate how a health system is performing. And whenever we think of a health system, we need to think of these five um, topics. So first is financing, then payment, organization, regulation, and behavior. In the next slide, I will go forward into giving some examples. If you can go to the next slide, please. So first, the financing means where does the money come from? So how is the health system financed? Where do we have the money to provide healthcare in, um, in uh, the country? And then the payment means where does the money go? So how do we pay the health workforce and the other relevant uh, parties? How do we... Uh, distribute the money in the health system? How do we, um, let's say, how do we invest in creating new facilities and new materials, logistics, and so on? Then the organization means who does what, basically task distribution inside the health system. So what are the roles of the Ministry of Health, of the National Health Insurance Program, and um, um, what are their roles uh, in providing health care to the population? Then the regulation. The regulation means on based on what laws are the is the health system functioning in the country, and um, of course we should have laws and we should have pass laws that ensure universal health coverage to our population, and um, that's where advocacy um, kicks in when you need to pressure um, the people who are responsible for. Um, for providing laws in the country to make sure that UHC is um, uh, implemented there. Lastly, behavior. Behavior means what's the public doing about healthcare and how is how are they involved in the healthcare system? So, for example, what kind of public health campaigns are there organized? 
what the civil society responds to to different projects related to to health and so on um basically these are something this may seem a bit theoretical but it is um a way of you taking care of a health system to work and to function and these are five aspects that you can think of when um when thinking of a health system and when you will go through the country profiles that we have designed for you but of course it's not um it's not done as i was mentioning before by all the countries and um i'm curious if you can think right now uh, just for one two three seconds how many countries actually have established health systems uh, around the world or per a percentage of countries uh, and the answer will be in the next slide uh, unfortunately it's only 20 percent of the countries worldwide who have established health system and that's incredibly low as you can see um, that means that the other 80 percent are functioning uh, mostly on out-of-pocket payments that means that the patient needs to pay once they arrive at the healthcare facility and it's a really big financial burden and not only that but it doesn't ensure that the patient is well cared in those countries not 100 percent of course but i'm um, referring to the basic healthcare needs that sometimes are not met in those in the other 80 percent of the um, countries that are not having a proper health system and a proper organized um, this concludes the theoretical part uh, that i wanted to provide you with and i think it's a necessary part for you first of all uh, if you are national exchange officers to know if you want to conduct this training or um, this training meaning global health that or uh, universal health coverage simulation but it is also important for you to know it so you can share it for, for, forward to to your members why because now we have the health system database so this is um this was a small working group joint scopy and scoff um that took place for two years uh, in a row during these two years we had different participants in the small working group and different coordinators and before saying anything else i really want to thank all of them for their efforts in developing the country profiles and all the small working group itself because we discovered um, on, on the way, we discovered how um, challenging it is and how time consuming. So I really want to take a time to thank everyone for, for this. So during these two years, what we did, um, and I will go briefly to what we did first, we uh, developed a um, country profile. A country profile mean, meaning a template. Okay, what do we want to know from the health system of those countries? So we develop seven points that I will talk to you later about. And then we said, okay, now we have the template. We need to distribute the countries among us. We distributed all the countries among the small working group participants, and they started to work on um, finding resources and um, putting the information into a very easy to read and uh, structured way. What we wanted basically with this database is to collect just the main points of the health systems without going in too much detail, just for you as um, Scopy enthusiasts and Scopy members to know uh, the basics and to work with them um, to share them further. So we, we did this. We, we then had someone who was uh, following up on them, the coordinators, and who was checking that everything is all right and all the design and so on, which is also uh, a lot of time to do. But this is how we organized. We, we had online meetings, of course, and all the um, capacity building before so that people know what are what is expected from them. Um, here in this, um, in this slide, you can see the country health, uh, health systems profile. So uh, there are seven points that we worked on. First is the orientation. So basic concept of the health system in that particular uh, country or more like an introduction. Then in the second one, the management, who is managing and who's um, um, leading the health system and what are the roles in, uh, with, in every uh, aspect. Then is the financing. After that, we talked about healthcare facilities, how are they distributed in the country, what is lacking, what is not. Then we had a special focus on primary healthcare because as you know, primary healthcare is one of the 
main points in achieving universal health coverage. So there we talk about general practitioners, uh, different screening programs or public health campaigns, what it exists in that particular health system. Then we talk about health workers and uh, how, again, how are they distributed geographically? If some regions of the country lack, um, lack health workers, how are they remunerated and so on. And lastly, we offer you resources to read further on those um, health systems because, as I mentioned, we are more trying to summarize everything in the, um, in the country profiles. But in the resources part, you can see way uh, more developed um, websites or books um, where you can read from. So um, the database right now looks like this. What we worked on are the scope active countries so far. Um, we will share the um, database with you on the servers and you will be able to find, if you can go back one slide please, you will find there the folder where you will have the countries in each um, IFMSA region that we have. You can go there and um, click on one of the um, one of the countries that are interesting for you to, to read. So we will share this and um, later on I will tell you what more. What more I want to tell you now is that, um, so right now as Tanya was mentioning, we have the global health team in Scopi, that is universal health coverage and health systems. And I guess it's um, easy to understand why are we tackling the topic now together with uh, what um, Tanya and Kanchana were saying because um, right now is the perfect moment after you receive the health system database to start using it and start implementing some parts so that you can also follow our global health framework and to teach our members something more than just the practical stuff that we are dealing in with exchanges usually. So this is uh, something else that's, um, uh, that's interesting and educational and should be, should be further developed. So, okay, now if we go to some examples, just, okay, here you can just see some examples of how a country profile looks like. So also with some images uh, and some graphs and in the um, upper left corner, you can find uh, some resources so you can click on them on the links and go and read more. Okay, but now how to use the database. So um, after it will be shared, I encourage you to first just read the profiles you are interested in. Maybe you've been in an exchange, maybe you want to know more about your own health system or to, um, to read about your friend's health system. So uh, use it also as an educational resource for yourself. And then in the same uh, idea, use the information for any kind of university project or um, paper that you're writing or anything university, uh, university related, if you find it useful. So don't uh, stick to it only um, in Scopy, but maybe use it outside Scopy as well. Then going back to Scopy, and this is the main focus on what we're uh, encouraging you to do, is to share it with your outgoing students, uh, first of all. So the outgoing students can have some idea um, before going in an exchange on uh, the health system of the country that they're uh, going there. And this can be done in the pre-departure training. Maybe you can mention it or uh, also have an, any kind of activity on, um, on this topic with the outgoing students so they understand the importance of knowing the health system before going to their exchange because once they are there, once they're in the hospital, they can pay attention to many other aspects, not only the medical um, the medical aspect, but also how is the system organized, how do the um, patients have money to pay for their healthcare and so on. So this is very important to be done before. But if it's not done before, you can still apply it with your incoming students. Once they are, uh, once they are in your local committee or in your NMO, you can decide to make any kind of activities with them on uh, using the health system database, taking some examples, uh, making group discussions or group work on several, uh, several health systems that maybe are from different models, the ones that I was explaining, and then having a discussion on how 
comparing comparing all the aspects that they uh, read about. So this can also be done with the incoming students. And I can mention one example. Uh, in the global health training that we conducted in my local committee um, two years ago, we used this, we used some time to talk about health systems and it was very, very productive and very interesting for the incoming students since they were all from different, um, uh, for, from different cultures and systems and societies to discuss these aspects. So I really encourage you to do it because I think it's something that they will be open to. And lastly, Use the database to organize the trainings. I'm sorry, a bit. Sorry, continue. No, 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 no worries, but I was coughing again. Uh -huh. So uh, the last part um, on how to use the database is to organize trainings on health systems um, and to use the information to maybe share it uh, back in your um, national general assemblies or uh, in other uh, global health related trainings. So use that information uh, for this um, as well. Now the last uh, the last slide is what next. So what is gonna um, what is it required for this database? So first, uh, we need a constant update on it because it was done by um, participants in the small working group, but they are not natives in those countries, or maybe they didn't have enough resources to read and to write about. So. Um, for this reason, we will share it with the NMOs and we will ask for input from them so that we can um, re readjust some parts if needed or add some more points. So uh, it is definitely something that needs to be done in dynamics because um, it is always changing. Maybe even some data that we added there, it's changing year after year. So that's why a constant update is needed. And also that's why the global health framework states that we need to update it once a year after 2021. What else you can do is to get involved in future small working groups on this topic. If we will have in any kind of meetings, uh, international or national meetings, you can get involved in these kind of small working groups. If not, you can also propose in having these small working groups nationally or internationally if you find them useful or necessary. And lastly, um, I definitely encourage you to contact the Scopy General Assistant for any kind of additions that you have related to the health system database or comments or questions, something that remained unclear for you. And um, I'm mentioning here Scopy General Assistant, but for sure all the other uh, Scopy IT members that uh, are there for you. So basically um, the health system database was developed uh, hand, hand uh, in hand with SCOF and uh, it was a joint collaboration and a beautiful one between the two standing committees and I think all the topics that we mentioned before are uh, just a proof of how well we can collaborate uh, with other standing committees and how important this is for development also of our exchange program but also uh, of our knowledge generally so um, I'm very happy again for this collaboration and I will just end my part saying thank you for, for watching and thank you everyone for contributing to this database. Thank you very much Steffi and Kanchana and special thank you to everyone who still stayed with us until the very end of this long, long webinar. Now it is the Q&A time, so please feel free to ask your questions if you have any. Uh, please use the chat on your right until um, during this few minutes I'll keep talking. Also once again expressing the gratitude to everyone contributing to this, uh, who has contributed to this huge work on the global health education and global health theme in Scopin specific, uh, specifically. Um, and there are a lot of uh, international teams starting from 2016 at least. However, actually found out that global health, uh, global health was even addressed during the General Assembly Scopy sessions in August meeting 2011. Uh, we found some archives on this topic. So, as you see, it is our priority and we do believe that um, Scopy Exchange Program is one of the best opportunities to actually learn about global health 
on the spot because you can read a, a lot about it, but only while you see the difference with your own eyes, only when you actively analyze it in your mind, you can actually understand what it all is about and how we can improve this in the future. So thank you, girls. Thank you, Kanchana and Steffi. You did amazing. Thank you for helping me. Also, thank you to Alina. She's also not with us, unfortunately, because of uh, some circumstances that she had. Uh, she would have been with us if not some emergency. And yeah, do you still have any questions? So far, I can't see anything in the chat. Also, please promote uh, this concepts we will write in the description we will uh, set the time when every part is beginning because generally you realize that we have three big parts about the global health theme framework about the UHC simulation and about the health system database so that if you're interested in one specific topic you will be able to watch that specific part and not all the uh, almost Okay, one hour, uh, one hour and ten minutes were so far, right? Uh, we were afraid it would be longer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And of course, we'll also link the materials in the description. We'll send an email with the uh, link once again and with the PDF version of the PowerPoint so that you could go through the links in case you want to. And yes. Please be proactive, contact us and spread this um, to your members. Okay, do you have anything to add, girls? No, just a big thank you. Okay. okay. Yes, a thank you from my side too. <laughs> thank you, girls. Thank you, Louise. <laughs> We received a message from him. Uh, everything was fine, I guess. Okay, then I think we can close the webinar. And you know that you can always contact us in person. And yes, we have the slide with resources. And we have the thank you slide for you as well. Okay, I'm going to stop the streaming now. Okay.